just thought about these commonalities from the Kantian perspective. What would you expect of these practices from the perspective of a second language acquisition? We just said that practices require what? Language, communication, written, oral, multiple representations, all of that. Because how would you argue from evidence if you don't use some sort of language and communication? So from the language perspective, the new standards, again, raise the bar for language. It's a language intensive. It's a, it raises the bar for content. It's a rigorous content. And it calls for a high level of a classroom discourse across all content areas. So would you like to see what it looks like? Ready? Suspense. Here is the old paradigm. You have to confess from the second language acquisition field. No, I'm kidding. So all paradigm used to be that there is a content and there is a language. And the traditional paradigm used to be that second language acquisition is primarily about acquiring vocabulary, developing grammar, and speaking like a native speaker. Would you agree? Nodding? Traditionally. So when you think about the English language standards, traditionally, it's about low frequency, high frequency vocabulary. Or use a word and use a phrase and use a sentence and use a discourse, paragraph like. So these are all about the discrete elements. So here is what I was always wondering about in the past. So in science education, I'm supposed to be somebody who knows a little bit about second language acquisition, but I didn't feel like that I was invited to the table when second language acquisition colleagues were developing English language proficiency standards. I was not invited and I did not know what level one, level two, word, phrases, sentences, and discourse, what those mean, because I was not invited. I didn't understand why I was not invited until I saw this diagram saying it's a because content and language traditionally were separate. Language people do their own thing, content people do their own thing. There is no collaboration between the two, right? So no wonder that I was not invited. The new paradigm is somewhat different. So when you think about text complexity, discourse rich, argumentation, purpose of the text, and all of those, there is a great deal of overlap between content and language. Am I seeing nodding? It's not clear cut of a vocabulary on one hand and content on the other hand. It's a vocabulary, text complexity, discourse, argumentation, all in the service of learning the content. So far so good, right? It gets even better. How? It still is a content separate and language separate. Now, when we say content, what do we have? We have a content of English language arts, we have a content of mathematics, and we have a content of science, and we have a content of social studies, right? And we just talked about the idea that practices are common across all subject areas. That when you argue from evidence in science, you also argue from evidence in social studies, and you also argue from, argue from evidence in mathematics, right? So, traditionally it used to be all in silos. Now, math and language has commonality. And science has commonalities with a language, like language as the glue. And language arts all has about commonalities of discourse and text and all of that. 